Big ridiculous question. I'm sorry for it once again. Who is the greatest mathematician of all time? <laughs> Maybe one who's no longer with us. Uh, who are the candidates? Euler, Gauss, Newton, Ramanujan, Hilbert. Uh, so first of all, as, as, as I mentioned before, like there's a, there's some time dependence. <laughs> but <laughs> on the day, yeah. Like, like if if you if you if you plot cumulatively over time, for example, Euclid, like like sort of like yeah. is, is is one of the leading contenders. Um, and then maybe some unnamed un anonymous mathematicians before that. Um, you know, whoever came up with the concept of, of numbers. You know, <laughs> you know. Um, Do mathematicians today still feel the impact of Hilbert? Just oh yeah, directly uh, of what, everything that's happened in the twentieth century. Yeah, yeah, Hilbert spaces. We have lots of things that are named after him, uh, of course. Just the arrangement of mathematics and just the introduction of certain concepts. I mean, twenty-three problems have been extremely influential. There's some strange power to the declaring which problems. Yeah, a hard to solve yeah. the statement of the open problems. Yeah, it, I mean, you know, this is bystander effect in, 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 everywhere. Right? Like, if, if no one says you should do X, everyone just sort of mills around waiting for somebody else to to uh, to do something, and and like nothing gets done. Um, so, and and like it, like it's the one one thing that actually uh, you have to teach undergraduates in mathematics is that you should always try something. So um, you see a lot of paralysis um, in. An undergraduate trying a math problem, if they recognize that there's a certain technique that that can be applied, they will try it. But there are problems for which they see none of their standard techniques obviously applies, and the common reaction is then just paralysis. I don't know what to do. I, oh, um, or as, uh, I think there's a quote from The Simpsons: "I've tried nothing and I'm all out of ideas." Um, <laughs> so you know, like the next step then is to try anything, like no matter how stupid. Um, and in fact, how almost the stupider the better. Um, which you know, I want a technique which is almost guaranteed to fail, but the way it fails is going to be instructive. Um, like it, it fails because you, you you're not at all taking into account this hypothesis. Oh, this hypothesis must be useful. That's a clue. I, I think you also suggested somewhere this this fascinating approach, which <laughs> really stuck with me. I started using it; and it really works. I think you said it's called structured procrastination. No, yes, <laughs> it's when you really don't want to do a thing, but you imagine a thing you don't want to do more. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's yes. worse than that. And then in that way, you procrastinate by not doing the thing that's worse. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice hack. It actually works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, um, I mean, with anything like. You know, I mean, like you've, um, psychology is really important. Like you, 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 you talk to athletes, like marathon runners and so forth, and you know, and they talk about what's the most important thing: is it their training regimen or the diet and so forth? Actually, so much of it is actually psychology. Um, you know, to, just tricking yourself to to think that the problem is feasible, um, so that you can be motivated to do it. Is there something our human mind will never be able to comprehend? Well, I sort of, I guess, a mathematician. I mean, you know, like it's a reduction. It's a large, there must be some sufficiently large number that you can't, you can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing that came to mind. So that, but even broadly, is there? Are we? Lim is there something about our mind that we're going to be limited, even with the help of mathematics? Well, okay. I mean, it's, like, how much augmentation are you willing? Like, like for example, if if I didn't even have pen and paper. Um, like if I had no technology whatsoever, okay, so I'm not allowed blackboard, pen and paper. Right. You're already much more limited than you would be. Incredibly limited. Even language, the, the English language is a technology. Uh, it's a, it's one that's been very internalized. So you're right, they're really, the, the, the formulation of the problem is incorrect because there really is no longer a, just a solo human. We're already augmented in extremely complicated intricate ways right yeah yeah yeah. so we're already like a collective intelligence yes yeah i guess it's just, so humanity plural has much more intelligence in principle on his good days <laughs> than, than than the individual humans put together uh, yeah, it can also have yeah. less okay but uh um yeah so yeah mathemat method the mathematical community plural is is, is an incredibly super intelligent uh entity um that uh, no single human mathematician can can come close to, to to replicating. You see it a little bit on these like question analysis sites. Um, uh, so this math overflow, which is the math version of Stack Overflow, mm -hmm. and like sometimes you get like this very quick responses to very difficult questions from the community, um, and it, it's, it's it's a pleasure to watch actually as as, a, as an expert. I'm a fan spectator of that uh, <laughs> of that site, just seeing the brilliance of the different people there, um, the depth of knowledge that some people have. And the, the willingness to engage in the 
and the rigor and the nuance of the particular question. It's pretty cool to watch. It's fun. It's almost like just fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, what gives you hope about this whole thing we have going on, human civilization? I think, uh, yeah, the, um, the younger generation is always like like really creative and enthusiastic and, and inventive. Um, I, I, it's a pleasure working with 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 uh, with, uh, with young students. Um, you know, the uh, the progress of science tells us that the problems that used to be really difficult can become extremely, you know, can become like trivial to solve. You know, it's, you know I mean, like it, it was like navigation. You know, just just knowing where you were on, on the planet was this horrendous problem. People people died. Um, you know, uh, or, or lost fortunes because they couldn't navigate. You know, and we have devices in our pockets that do this automatically for us. Like it's a completely solved problem. You know, so things that are seem unfeasible for us now could be maybe just sort of homework exercises for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things I find really sad about the finiteness of life is that I won't get to see all the cool things we create as a civilization. You know, that because in the next hundred years, two hundred years, just imagine showing showing up in two hundred years. Yeah, well, already plenty has happened. You know, like if if you could go back in time and, and talk to your your teenage self or something, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, just the internet and and, and our AI. I mean, it's like again, they've they've been into they're getting to be internalized and says, so yeah, of course, uh, an AI can understand our voice and and give reasonable, you know, slightly incorrect answers to to any question. But yeah, you know, like this was mind blowing even two years ago. And in the moment, it's hilarious to watch on the internet and so on, the the drama, uh, people take everything for granted very quickly, and then they, we humans seem to entertain ourselves with drama. Well, out of anything that's created, somebody needs to take one opinion, another person needs to take an opposite opinion, argue with each other about it. But when you look at the arc of things, I mean, just even in progress of robotics, yeah, just to take step back and be like, wow, this is beautiful that we humans are able to create this. Yeah, when the infrastructure and, and the culture is is healthy, you know, the, the community of humans can be so much more intelligent and mature and, and, and rational than the individuals within it. Well, one place I can always count on rationality is the comment section of your blog, which I'm a big <laughs> fan of. There's a lot of really smart people there. And thank you, uh, of course, for uh, for putting those ideas out on the blog. And it's I can't tell you how uh, honored I am that you would spend your time with me today. I was uh, looking forward to this for a long time. Terry, I'm a huge fan. Um, you inspire me. You inspire millions of people. Thank you so much for talking. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure.